Hello everyone, my name is Delquan Dorsey and I am the Community Engagement Coordinator as well as Supplier Diversity Coordinator for the Office of Diversity, Equity and Poverty at JCPS. And I just wanted to uh, bring more awareness to the community about a particular issue as far as uh, what some of our legislators in Frankfurt are potentially working on legislation to split JCPS. And so I uh, just wanted to uh, talk with you, uh, bring some more information. I would like to talk to my friend here, Ms. Melissa Nelson, uh, who is a doctoral student at Spalding University. And how you doing? I'm doing all right. How about you? I'm doing great. Doing great. Well, I appreciate all your work and research and uh, bringing awareness to this issue. Um, so tell me a little bit about why is it important for the community to be aware of this potential legislation to split JCPS? Well, I mean, breaking up JCPS or, or splitting them up is going to impact us all um, on every level. So whether you're a student, whether you're uh, a parent, whether you are a community person, um, there are going to be implications, things that are gonna happen as a result of that. Okay. And so one particular issue is like school choice. Okay. Um, you know, as families, especially with like the whole um, revamping of the school assignment plan, um, the whole goal of that was to give families more choice, especially those that live within the choice zone or the West End yes. um, that haven't really had that choice. And so if JCPS breaks up, that's going to confine people to their neighborhoods. So therefore, you're, you're very limited on what you can, what schools you can go to and what resources will be available. Um, I mean, magnet schools, I'm, I'm a product of JCPS, I'm a product of Louisville Mill High School. Okay. Um, so I went to a traditional school. Um, my daughter is currently a student at Louisville Mill High School, um, go Bulldogs. <laughs> uh, but the options of being able to attend those types of schools, my twins, I have twin boys that attend WB Du Bois. Okay. And so you have these magnet programs, you have these specialty schools that are very beneficial for the community, right. um, for families and for students, but those would go away because you can't say you're, you're going to school within your neighborhood right. or the confines of this particular area and then also say, well, you can still go here. Right. So, I mean, we live in a particular, like we don't live close to male high school. Right. And so therefore, you know, we wouldn't be able to go to those schools. Right, because it'd be pretty much confined. If they split Jefferson County up into two to three districts, then you're confined to that district of where you live. Mm -hmm. And if you want that magnet option, you would have to go across, uh, you School would have boundaries. to move. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that would, that, would, uh, that, that would be extremely hard, especially when you consider um, how transient our population is. I think uh, uh, data department said something about there's a, uh, 125 students that transfer a day uh -huh. from school to school. So, yeah, that could that could have a big impact. So, uh, what uh, now? Well, we also I mean, just thinking mm -hmm. about that um, because I mean you're saying like people would have to move. Well, right. let's think about that. Okay. Um, the impact of like financial or economic disadvantage. Um, you know, we know that people that live in the West End. Um, historically have not made as much as those that live in the East End. Right. Um, you got housing and, stock values. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so even if I wanted to like sell my house, my house is going to cost less or I'm going to get less for my house than if I lived in the East End. Right. Um, right. So those property values play a factor in multiple ways. But if I decided that I wanted to go take my child and, and be in Mel's district, I would literally, would I be able to afford that, you know? Mm. Um, especially if I lived in the West End, would I be able to get enough from my, my home, one, to make sure that I cover my mortgage, right. and then also start a new mortgage on a house in that area, which we know um, it's going to cost more just because of the location values. But also like the segregation factors, because Louisville is highly segregated. Yes. Um, and so that's racially and economically. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that whole factor of like being confined to your, your neighborhood um, and those t those property tax values um, come back into play because if I decide, well, I can't move and I have to go to school um, in my area, and also like, how do we split up those resources? But my tax, my my property tax values are going to this particular school in that area. Right. 
is that going to be economically um, or equitably the same as it would if I lived in the East End? Mm -hmm. So if I live by Oxmoor Mall, mm -hmm. my property tax value is going to be higher. Right. Um, and those schools that are in the area, then, you know, technically going to get more money based on that, right? Right. Um, so how do we ensure that it's equitable across the board? Right. Um, who even decides what is equitable if JCPS splits up? I mean, right now we have, you know, central office that kind of manages all of those things. Mm -hmm. um, but once you break up, who, who then, you know, is overseeing that? Mm. Well, then that falls back on taxpayers again because more than t likely um, legislators, our lawmakers, our, um, our government is going to have to make those decisions, right? Right. And so now we're having to pay more because of that. Okay. I mean, historically, we can look at, I won't say historically, but we can look at other um, areas that have split and the process that they have gone through. Logistically, it's a nightmare. Some of them still have it. Um, I think Tennessee or um, I know Las Vegas is still trying to decide on um, whether they are splitting up and that costs taxpayers money. Okay. Um, they're still kind of in that whole, um, let's assess what this looks like. And that costs taxpayers money. Right. Um, and we, you know, don't necessarily want to keep raising taxes for that or spending tax money on that when we could be putting that money towards the education system in itself. Right. Right. And we know that um, that's interesting because you started talking about uh, other cities that have uh, split districts. What do you think is driving this split district? And will it lead to improved outcomes for our students? Will, it, will our students be better off uh, based on the, the motivation behind this split? I want to believe that the, the motivation for the split is coming from a good place, right? Okay. Um, I want to believe that our lawmakers are seeing situations and understand that it's very difficult to manage um, JCPS. I think they see that, and I think that their initial reaction is saying, well, if we break it up, then it's not as hard to manage. But the research is out on that. Um, the research is not consistent about whether small districts or larger districts really have an impact. And so if we're not sure if large districts have an impact on student achievement, then what are we doing here? Because at the end of the day, it may, um, it may seem like a good idea, um, but it's not going to cost less money to manage the school districts. It's going to cost more money. It's going to cost more money. Mm -hmm. And what about student achievement? Right. Because at the end of the day, that should be the driving force. And we know that larger districts that are able to pool their resources right. have higher achievement. Um, and while, yes, I know the student, um, the, the school report card came out, and it looks grim mm -hmm. um, on some aspects, but at the same time, we can see that there are things that are happening. Right. You know? Um, and I think with a little bit more, like if we had the full backing right. of the legislators and put that money and those resources into supplementing and supporting um, our students mm -hmm. in the school system that they currently have, then I think we would see um, a lot more to gain as far as student achievement. Um, and also, um, you know, I, I'm the manager of education for Metro United Way. Okay. And I represent uh, or I support a lot of out-of-school providers. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them support JCPS um, or the students that attend JCPS right. and want to be, you know, a f helping factor in that. I think partnering with outer school providers is a great way to, uh, once again, just bolster those student achievements. And so if we have the city and the resources and all of the people that are working towards student achievement together, mm -hmm. um, I think we could not be in a better place. Right, right. I totally agree because, you, yes, uh, our scores, we see some scores, not everything is like for what is, we, it's, it's not, not where, where we would like for it right. to be, but at the same time, we notice, uh, you know, I like to uh, recognize my department, I work oh. around racial equity policy because it's only been around for five years, but we are actually starting to see some gains and some improvement. And uh, Dr. Dawson, who's over our research department, uh, when we asked her, they, she, her opinion is not only do we need to continue to do it, we probably need to continue to do more of it uh -huh. so we could get more results. And if we don't have a central office uh, department, 
uh, then it's going to be hard to uh, be consistent with making sure our students one get the resources uh, they deserve in order to, in order to be successful, but two making sure it's done in a way um, that provides opportunity and what we what we've known to where we start seeing some success. And so I think about so in my prior professional experience, I worked for a small independent middle school. Okay. Um, mm. And so I think about like working in that small school and that's basically what it would be like for those smaller districts. We would have to rely on JCPS to provide supplemental services for our students. Okay. It's not like um, the school could afford to have a um, speech therapist. Right. And so you think or about a social worker. Or I mean, I happen to be a social <laughs> worker, but you know, they couldn't afford to have just me do that particular job. Right. And so when you think about like those aspects of the school, you know, really those are the things that make JCPS great. You okay. know, all of those supplemental services, the increased mental health, um, all of the extra things that they can do for IEPs okay. um, are what we really need. Mm -hmm. And so we know that coming out of a pandemic, it's rough on everybody. Right. But kids are not prepared for that. Right. And so we can't expect them to come out of a pandemic and go through the trauma and the stress of that right. and not exhibit trauma or stress-related symptoms. Mm -hmm. And so you can't expect them to just come back into a classroom and be like nothing happened. Right. You know, as adults, it's hard for us to do that. Right. But for young kids coming back into a school system, we're bound to see lower achievement just because we've missed all of this time. Right. And not just time like in a school setting, but like time with peers. Right. So social factors. Right. Um, as a social worker, you know, I think a lot about social and emotional learning. Of course, yes. And so a lot of that was missed because at home on a computer screen, mm -hmm. um, I'm not getting those things. I'm not getting right. those learnings. I'm not able to participate in that particular way um, to get the socialization that I need to sit still in the classroom or understand that my peers need, um, they need me to be quiet because right. for two years I was able to get up and do whatever I wanted. Right. And so I think about those times... Um, you know, I think about what it was like to work in the school that I worked in. Um, and so you said you worked in an independent middle school. Mm -hmm. What were some of the challenges uh, being in an independent middle school that did not have a large district for support? Um, well, one, you have students that have IEP plans. or okay. um, And what's the IEP plan? Uh, independent. Mm -hmm. No, no, you asked me for letters now. Okay, I'm you, sorry. Um, is, is it individual education? Yes, plan? there okay. we go. I'm okay. like individual um, education plan, and so those are when you Sorry, Richmond plan, I think. Yeah, yeah. when you have um, you know special needs or okay. you have particular learning needs okay. that need to be addressed in a particular way, mm -hmm. it's hard. So if I, like I said, if I have a student that needs speech. Um, therapy. Right. We we don't have in-house speech therapy because right. that costs money. And so it'd be on uh, it'd be on that family. It'd be on that be family able to get those services. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you needed, um, so part of my job there was to start a family resource center because we didn't have one. Okay. Um, they existed for a long time without a family resource center, but coming out of a pandemic, right? You need those wraparound. Um, services. You need those wraparound services, right. and so. Even with that, like it wasn't my full time job, right? And so you needed someone to do it full time. Right. You know, families are struggling, right? And you don't have those resources. With JCPS, you have you know the Friskies, right? And you have people that are there to just support those families in that way, right? Yeah. When you when you're in an independent middle school, it's it's difficult one because it's a middle school, right? Um, but then when you start to look at the the issues that are surrounding the students, right? Um, and so, like, if I have a student, we had a student that um, was experiencing trouble at home, right? Right. And so when they come to school, they bring that with them. Right. And so because I was a social worker, I'm able to talk with that student. I know that. Right. But had I not been there, there's not anyone else there that's really qualified to do that. Right. And so, you know, you think about, like, would each of those schools have somebody? Right. Who, who, who decides like how much money the schools get that are allocated to those potential sources? Because one, they're going to be looking at teachers. Mm -hmm. They're going to be looking at administrators. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we have to think about security because we want to keep our kids safe. Mm -hmm. And so you have to put money and resources into that. 
will those supplemental services, you know, fall by the wayside? Like, if I have money left over, then I can afford to do these things. Right. When it shouldn't be the case. It shouldn't be if and then. It should be we have those resources, yeah. which is what we have with JCPS. All right. Uh, okay, great. I appreciate that. That's a, another level of insight. You mentioned earlier uh, some of the uh, policy and, and, the, and the segregation that uh, we know is uh, is prevalent in, in Louisville based on housing segregation. Mm -hmm. And we know that Louisville is a city that uh, experienced redlining mm -hmm. uh, back in the in the forties, and we really still haven't recovered from that. Mm -hmm. So, if we were to split, considering the 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 disparity in in our housing, the differences between in our housing stocks based on the, our neighborhoods, then it's really not fair because we never really resolved mm -hmm. the impact of segregation. Tell me, do you have any insight on that? I mean, thoughts on that? you are hitting it right on the head. Okay. One, as a city, as a country, we've really never dealt with those issues. Mm -hmm. And so when you have a city that is um, split the way that we are, mm -hmm. um, and I, I believe one of the legislators mentioned possibly splitting into like three different sections. Right. And his solution to not making um, one district just considerably African-American and then one um, European or white. Completely white. Right. right. Was to kind of combine the East End and the West End as one district. You would still be confined to the schools in your neighborhood. Right. So we're not fixing the diversity within the school system or mm -hmm. the in, within the individual schools. It's just making a Band-Aid fit for, well, this school district isn't so, you know, so bad. Right. Um, but we have to kind of look at what has historically happened. Yes. And if we continue down this road and split, we're only going backwards. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that answered your question. No, but. no, that's no, that's good. So what so what can um, those that are concerned and becoming aware of this issue, um, one, um, what can they do to be more informed and then also what can we do to uh, also uh, What's the call to action? What can they do about it to express themselves or express their concern? Um, one, you know, we just had an election. Mm -hmm. And I think people did speak up, um, continue to vote, um, right. continue Voting. to to speak, mm -hmm. um, speak out to your legislators. Okay. Um, those that are, are elected to represent you are there to serve you. Yes. And so depending on how you feel, like speak and voice that mm -hmm. um, so that that voice is represented. Um, I know you all have had some meetings with the community. Yes. Attend those meetings. Mm -hmm. um, learn more because don't just take you know my word for it or your word for it, but actually read and see like what's going on. Don't just take someone else's word for it. Um, and attend school board meetings. Yes. And speak out. Yeah, appreciate that. Yes, and as a matter of fact, you recently um, spoke at a board meeting. Thank you for that. It was very informative. Uh, we want to make sure that we encourage community. Uh, matter of fact, on December 5th, uh, we'll, we'll have a presentation regarding our legislative priorities, and we invite community to, uh, to come and express their concerns. And so uh, you just read out, reach out to JCPS and just uh, let them know that you want to uh, speak and share your uh, comments because a lot of people don't realize that our board is actually elected. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes, they make policy, but they are, are representative uh, based on votes. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yes, we want your voice heard uh, here at board meetings. You can email board board members and also your legislators, especially those that represent Jefferson County. Um, it's important to uh, make uh, make them aware of your concerns. And I do just want to point out that mm -hmm. this is not just a JCPS issue. Okay. Um, because we've had um, we've had recent. Um, notification that one that's um, that's unconstitutional they can't single out one district and so whatever right. happens with JCPS would have to happen with all of Kentucky okay and so if you think about the impact that would have on let's say Eastern Kentucky right. where there may not be a school close to me I may be traveling on a school bus um, for an hour to get to school right. and so if there's no school in my neighborhood then where do I go? How do I do that? Right. Um, and even to the point of, of here, 
um, if we break up JCPS, um, you know, in the West End, many of the schools have closed. Right. It's, and, it's only one physical high school that's not a mag magnet uh, inside of the Watterson. Exactly. Expressway 264. So if there's no school close to me, mm -hmm. um, where do I go to school? Right. How do I, how do I get there? Um, you're saying that you want schools within walking distance. Well, I have none. Mm -hmm. So now, again, that adds back to the taxpayers because we got to build schools. Right, right. And then we not even talked about the workforce issues, uh -uh. Uh, the difference in pay for teachers because they will not, it, w it would not be consistent. And uh, like if you moved across town, you have to move to a whole nother school district. And we're not even going to talk about uh, the difference in curriculum. Matter of fact, we you know talking about continuing the progress for the first time, we actually have a curriculum that is inclusive uh, and uh, diverse, and the students can see themselves in it. But we have a, a curriculum that is across the board, uh, elementary through high school, regardless of what school you go to. It re wherever you stopped in this one class, if you go to another JCPS, you will pick right back up. There and that's very important considering how transient our, our population is. So let me just ask from a macro uh, or large scale standpoint. We know that people um, move and come to uh, and buy houses and and there's always an interest of making sure the kids go to the ideal school that they they want to go to. If that if that breaks up and those those choices go away, what would be the economic impact? not only to community, but to, you know, Louisville keeps the lights on for the rest of the state. So what would be the economic impact to other school districts out in the, in the state or other communities economically? Well, if people can't get into a school that they want to necessarily go to or the schools in their area don't, um, what's to say that they don't leave Kentucky? Mm. Um, you know, if I have the financial means to do so or if I have a job that, or I get a job, um, now I'm leaving Kentucky. Um, I'm leaving Louisville. Um, I know that people say, you know, I'm moving out of Louisville to like Oldham County or Shepherdsville. Um, but we could see people doing that on a grander scale. Right. Um, or even leaving the city or the state as a whole mm. um, and going where they can get those particular resources. Right. Um, so, I mean, the economic effect could be it's like a ripple um you know you start with this one thing but then larger droves of people um or the larger community itself is then affected and so if we have fewer um economic things happening or people buying and selling right. and making money and spending or paying taxes in kentucky um or in louisville general um then that affects our city greatly right but then that also affects the rest of Kentucky. Right, right. And the rest of the, Kentucky is dependent on a strong, viable, workforce, uh, uh, growing economic uh, economy and workforce in Louisville in order to not only sustain itself, but more specifically, uh, when you look at uh, our, the way our education formula is set up uh, with SEEK funding, mm -hmm. Louisville actually gives out more than it gets back. Course. And and then that 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 uh, extra revenue would not be there, so it's almost like, from a policy standpoint, um, it's almost like they're shooting themselves in the foot if we do something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you think about like JCPS is a large provider of employment, right? Yes. Um, I, I can't remember exactly how many people you all have employed, but you have a lot of people. I think it's up to 10,000 to 13,000. You have a lot like of that. people employed with you in mm -hmm. some aspect. Um, and so and, and a lot of businesses that, locally that are work with us that are dependent on JCPS as well. And so if you have JCPS split up, right. there's another, you know, economic factor. Right. Um, as a teacher, I think you you mentioned you know, wondering like, if I, am I going to get paid the same amount? Right. Well, likely Are you're your, not. Are your benefits and your retirement? Likely you're not. Because okay. as a, a larger school district, you're able to get access to, you know, a certain amount of health insurance. Right. Um, based on the amount of employees that you have. Right, exactly. Smaller schools are not going to be able to afford the insurance that you currently have. And so you may have employees that are dependent upon that health insurance right. um, in more ways than one. And so 
that plays out in you know other ways. But now my health is being affected because JCPS broke up. You know all of the other things, um, retirement. Mm -hmm. You know those things are are all a factor. Um, you know my my dad is a retired JCPS um, employee. He used to teach at um, Our Lady of Peace. Okay. And so you know I think about him. Like he gets his benefits from working and putting in the time. And so if you have people that are even close to retirement, mm -hmm. does that all go away? Wow. Um, you know, there's just a lot of things. And I mean, there are other factors that come into it. So you think about um, teacher unions. Mm -hmm. And so even with that, like the research has shown that um, this type of legislation impacts teacher unions. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes is a result of like wanting to limit their influence right. on policy. Um, I think about when I got my master's, it was during the time that teachers were calling in or calling out and are up in Frankfurt. Um, I did an internship with ACLU of Kentucky okay. and we were up in Frankfurt all the time and it was just an amazing experience to see all the teachers come together and stand for something that they support, right. um, which was themselves as mm -hmm. they should. Right. And so if you have that type of influence, that can be scary to someone who's trying to um, continue to make legislation and maybe goes against it. Okay. And so I may be motivated a little bit to say, well, teacher unions may be not so great for me because mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to do these things. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there is an impact on teachers unions that have to break up because there's no unified central right. school district. And each independent school would be able to choose um, mm -hmm. or hire their own teacher staff. So you may be a teacher in that school. Maybe you don't even have your job. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they choose to go with someone else because to pay for you would be expensive. Right, right. Wow, so, so many issues, uh, so many things that, that it impacts. But uh, what do you think, as a, as a parent uh, of JCPS students, what, what would you say would be the most uh, top two to three things that a parent should know about this and how this is a threat to the, their quality of life and, and the opportunity to bring uh, for their students to be successful, especially when you think about the programs and and, th and all the different supports we have. Um, one know one know what the, your school offers right. okay. and what you appreciate about your school. Mm -hmm. um, I know as parents, it's easy to rag on your school right. um, or what they don't have, but look at what they do have, mm -hmm. and then look at like potential schools that your your kids will go into especially if you have younger kids. Um, this is greatly going to impact them um, because you're gonna have to look at middle schools and you're gonna have to look at high schools um, and see what their options would be. Look at the schools in your neighborhood and look at their scores um, and see how you would feel about your kid going there, especially if they're not going to that school, if they're going to a school that's maybe not closer to your home. Um, look and see how that would impact you. Um, but again, doing your research and knowing what it is. I mean, I hope that most parents are doing that as they're preparing to move like from one school to the next. But if this happens, it would happen before you transition to you know, the next level of school. And so you need to know like what's in your area right now um, and what you would need to help your kid to be successful. Um, so if your school offers lots of um, after school program and after school activities. Um, and maybe those are things that your kid likes. Um, would they lose those things? Right. You know, keeping those things in mind. I think back to um, this summer I did some listening sessions okay. um, with people in the community. Mm -hmm. And I think about the kids that I talked with and the things that they um, appreciated or liked about their school. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, a lot of them said they didn't like anything because um, that's. <laughs> you know, kids, right. um, but when you start talking to them about the things that they do like, you know, they like their, um, they like their lunch, or they like lunchtime, or they like, um, they like their gym, they like after school programming, activities, um, their sports teams, right. and so get to know your kids and what they do like about their school. Right. Um, that's one thing we can all do right now is ask, mm -hmm. what do you like about your school? Right. Um, and what are some things that you would change? Mm -hmm. And so when I talked with them and asked them that question, a lot of them said, well, of course, you know, they don't like having to get up super early. 
Um, but also, you know, they just wanted to feel like someone cared about them. Mm. Um, and a lot of them said, well, I do have somebody at school that does care about me. Yeah. And would they lose that person? Because we know that that's important. Right. Um, so knowing what you would lose if JCPS was split up. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you so much for the information. And, no problem. Uh, continue to shine light um, on the situation, but also appreciate you for all you do for our community partners. That is huge. We know that we, uh, we thrive thanks to our uh, out-of-school time programs and after-school programs. So we appreciate making sure that they have support. So uh, please make sure you uh, stay informed. But once again, come out December 5th to uh, Van Hoos board meeting, uh, J Jefferson County Board of Education board meeting, 6 p.m. And if you want to uh, share your voice, then by all means, uh, sign up. And continue to follow us on social media so we can keep you informed and bring you uh, more information. All right, thank you.